And I thank the Most High God for giving us another chance to come in and go into his word, look into the benefit of who he is and realize that his blessings are for us in the earth. And Father, I ask you, I ask you by your might, by your power, help us. Help us in the earth, tell the truth, to tell the truth, that your name will be uplifted as you have revealed it into your word, not as we see it, not as benefiting military conquest, but to bring forth your word in the earth, your truth and your justice to all. Amen, amen, and amen. We've been talking lately because we are really interested in the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and what true salvation deliverance is about. And it has become increasingly apparent that the American Christianity was set up on a caste system. I've been showing it. I haven't probably shown one fiftieth of the information that's available. Because I also want to make sure that when I make us learn things that is relevant to the scriptures, I believe that's how the Most High God likes things to be done, and I'll show that tonight. But I did tell you all on the sat on Saturday after my aunt was buried, when I talked to a pastor there, and he had used my aunt to talk about the goodness that he and maybe others had done to her being a black woman that had picked cotton and had gone through the different times and slavery that she would have had the wonderful opportunity if she wanted to, to hate white people, and she didn't. By him using her to from my vantage point, show his goodness to what he has done to this little woman, or even if he calls her a friend. I don't know, he didn't really want to talk to me, and that's his prerogative. It is his prerogative. It is It is not evil in of itself if he doesn't want to talk to me. It's not good in of itself if he does want to talk to me. But if you're going to use something like that, there's somebody in my family that actually came and that would be with me when I'm teaching the Bible. I don't see anything wrong with me saying, if this is something that you're interested in, I have information I can help. But for your wife or to come back and say, you don't owe anything, or you just say, you're not gonna feel guilt. And then notice I didn't call his name. But for that to be said, and then to say, we just need to preach Jesus only preach Jesus. All I do is preach Jesus. I don't get into politics and to dismiss me and to dismiss how many of our family felt. That's an amazing thing, but that is something that's rampant throughout modern Christianity. And I want to talk about teaching Jesus, preaching Jesus today. But I'm not going to use that as a title. I want you to see why it is when I speak about these issues and about us, if we are saying that we are the people of God, if you're saying that you're the person or you're the people of God on this side, whether you're holiness on this side, if you're Methodist, this side, if you're Baptist, this side, if you say you're Pentecostal, which is a derivative of holiness, and then many of us still going to go back to Roman Catholicism, until we go back to what the scripture says, we're going to have many filters that we shouldn't have in the scriptures. But I, my title for tonight is Those Who Have Benefited from the Unjustly Oppressed Often Show the Same Damnable Spirit in Themselves as Their Ancestors Did. I, boy, if I don't share this screen, I'm. You're, you're a beautiful lady, Andrina. 
And I, sometimes I say a very exciting girl. Share my screen. And you look in the middle panel of my screen, you see my title. Those who have benefited from the unjustly oppressed often show the same damnable spirit in themselves as their ancestors did. Question, would it really be any different if they lived during the good old days? What do you mean, Tim? If you tell me to just preach Jesus when I mention injustices, inequities, the very thing that Luke chapter 1 verse 70 says when he shows that from the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began that what the Messiah would do when he came, it says that he would he would deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and all them that hate us and then it goes down and said that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. I want to understand if he came to deliver us from the hand of our enemies and them that hate us, that they might, that we might be able to serve them without fear during those days, since the Bible tell me that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Shouldn't I speak the same thing today? I know that I should. The question comes up is whenever Anytime it's mentioned anything that has happened to we black people and someone say, Tim, why do you talk about it? But nobody ever tell me to talk about when somebody can go and trace their ancestry back five, ten generations where lands were taken, gold was taken, silver was taken, water rights and all of these things were taken, the last names of people taken. Denominations taken, split up, set aside for the religious or the Christian caste system, and is being and we're told to forget about it. I want to know those who have benefited from being able to be in control of economies, sectors of the stock market, entertainment field over the religious and the instructional institutions that are set up and the determination of who will benefit from taxes. I'm talking about like Ukraine right now, the Vietnam and other places. Those who have benefited from the labor. And it benefited so well that we don't even think about it. It's just a way of living. Benefited from the legal system that oppressed many people they often show the same damnable, and I mean God damnable spirit in themselves as their ancestors did. And the real question is, would it really be any different for those that tell us to shut up, shut up, shut up about what has happened to us and just preach Jesus? Would it really be different if the same man that I'm talking about, if he saw somebody beating us, raping us, making us do work, and and we begged him to help, would it be the same thing? Just, just get Jesus. It's called Jesus. Didn't I read to you all about the preacher that said that in my other book? He told the lady, sometimes it's just work. You just, just need to go ahead and die. And after four years of repeatedly being raped by her master, he had enough compassion to buy her and let, him be, let her be his nurse. On the other side, I get people that are black, and I don't like to say African-American, you see, you can be an African-American and never share the ethnicity that I have. All you have to do is be born in any part of Africa that has been colonized. You can be called African-American because you can have dual citizenship. I don't see everybody walking around. I'm Chinese-American. I'm, I'm Dutch-American. I, I don't need those kind of titles. We called us Negroes. We called us Black. You saw when Black people came over here when they were Israel. It's all in many of your books, definitely like in Dr. John, I mean, John Lord Ogilvy's book, that talk about America and many other books. So if I say black, that's the misnomer that we use often. But I wanna say this, Jesus dealt with these issues. 
and I want to see that he just preached Jesus. Paul dealt with these issues. And saints, until we get rid of this pink elephant in the room, until we deal with this issue right here, according to the scripture, we're going to always have socialists. We're going to have either Marx, which is another form of socialism at times. We're going to have existentialists. We're going to have Republicans, Dem Democrats. We're going to have independents, LGBTQ. We're going to have any other group that wants to be able to claim victimhood without really having the same victimhood as we have to bring it up and say we're just like them, which is really a slap in the face when you're talking about over 500 years of mistreatment and over 400 years over here on this, on this soil. It's an insult. It's almost like comparing somebody get slapped in the face to somebody got, got their head shut, shot off with a shotgun and say, you know, we both we both had injustice and I know and I know exactly how you feel. Jesus dealt with it here in Matthew chapter 23. Let's look and see how Jesus dealt with it. You see, at the time that we're looking at here, we're looking at a group of people that have claimed the rights claim the authority and the privilege of being the people of God Most High, and they had a caste system, just like America had a caste system. These people are in charge. These people are being able to, they are able to say who's righteous, who is not righteous. Did you go to our school? Did you not go to our school? We have the same right because we can determine who is righteous to make the laws and to enforce the laws in as much as Rome will allow us to do so. And we find that they also, they got into bed with Roman figuratively speaking. Now, some of them may have done it physically, but I, I don't want to talk about that. So Jesus talks to these group of people, they're called scribes and Pharisees. Now, when I say this, I'm talking about the ones that are in charge. I am not saying every one of them, but I am talking about the ones that he's fussing to, fussing at, the ones that he's rebuking. So let's make sure that I've qualified what I'm saying. So in Matthew chapter 23, verse 29, he said, Woe, danger, great dread unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. And that is what I've shown you that a caste system is. A caste system that always has to go and take God's word, change God's word so that it will benefit them, put them up in the upper position, put everybody else in the lower position so that they can have the rights to the resources, the rights to be able to hear from God, at least to say that they hear from God, to make rule for one that they can exempt themselves from. The Messiah just say you're a hypocrite. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets. You build the monuments, okay? You ever heard of monuments being built? It's that you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. You make them look nice, the ones that are dead, the places where they dwell. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. They say, if we had been back there, well, yeah, we know what they did was wrong, but we're not responsible. We had nothing to do with that. We don't deserve any, any kind of words that come to us, whatever benefits we have received. We don't know, owe any kind of retribution. We, we don't owe anything to their memory. But what we'll do is we'll say something nice to him. Maybe we can say one of the prophets had a dream, you know. Uh, Daniel interpreted a dream. Joseph had a dream, but you didn't kill Joseph. You didn't kill Daniel. But what about the ones that were killed? Like Zechariah. Well, Jesus will talk about it as I go on. It says, they garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, 
we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Have you never heard? We didn't enslave you. We didn't steal you. We didn't take your land. We didn't take the land even after the civil war that you all had and give it back to other people and pay them reparations. We had nothing to do with that. We had nothing to do with you being unable to read, being whipped, being maimed. We had nothing to do with burning crosses of supposedly, supposedly the Lord Jesus in the yard. We had nothing to do with the terrorism of setting your houses on fire. We had nothing to do with burning your assemblies of the churches that you said about your Jesus and you taught us about your Jesus. And, but when I, we had a church that was speaking the truth that was contrary to what you were saying, I was got burned because at that time, the churches had a backbone because all the pressure was so hard. We're going to tell the truth. But Jesus said, verse 31, Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. It doesn't mean that you are just the children biologically. You bear witnesses to yourself. Remember, he called them hypocrites. Their fathers were hypocrites. You say that you wouldn't have done that, but you care nothing about what was done to the prophets. You care nothing about how they were mistreated and slandered. You're mistreating me. You you got something to say about my apostle, and soon you're about to kill me. You are the children of your father. You would have, in other words, done the same thing. Your attitude is exactly the same. And I don't want you to preach me your Jesus. If you're the, that kind of person that you're not willing to look back and see the atrocities, but I got to hear about the atrocities of a man named Hitler and leave out what he did to the Herero people and the people in West Africa that was black. And I got to hear, never forget on one side, but I'm supposed to forget on this side. I got to hear what happened when you took and you put some people and you locked them up from Japan and you paid them for what happened. But our people worked and was beaten. You tell us to forget this book here, and I'm not going to turn when you say an American dilemma. Go through and talk in chapter seven about how bad it was and what was trying to be done to get rid of black people. It was called the Negro problem. And you say, it doesn't matter. Weren't we neglected by your fathers? Those that feel the same way. Those that cared for us. Those that were like John Brown, those that risked their life, those that lost everything. I'm, I'm not talking to you because y you don't have the same mindset as those others did. You had the same mindset as others. This is wicked. This is wrong. But the money was big in cotton. The money was big in indigo. The money was big in rice. And the money is big right now in the prison industrial complex. And many other things I could mention, but I won't. You say, you are witnesses of yourselves, that you are children of them which killed the prophet. It was an insensitivity toward the suffering because of the benefiting of killing the prophets to shut their mouths that they could continually do injustice. And if you think that I'm twisting the scriptures, have you never read the book of Isaiah? You can just start at chapter one. Have you ever read the book of Hosea? You can go to chapter one, you can go to chapter four, you go to chapter six. I'm sure you haven't read Jeremiah then, right? I'm sure you don't know anything about a man by a man by the name of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that calls Israel to sin. The Bible says, you're a witness of, the, of yourselves, that the children of the prophets fill ye up the measure of your fathers. 
the most high God, when he gives us opportunities to repent and get things changed around us so that we can be used for his benefit. So when I teach these messages, when I'm teaching this message here, my number one primary thing is for those that are insensitive and don't care, don't have any compassion, don't want to see justice, don't care nothing about we black people wish that we were just dead or gone off the earth. My desire for you is to repent. My desire for you is to repent. My desire for you is to repent and to come to the most high God, uh, be broken in your heart for your weak wickedness and start doing what's right because who else better to be able to tell from the vantage point of the oppressor what was done so that we can help other people and don't tell me there haven't been in that have have not that have not done it because i read from those people and often they show me things that i did not know that had been hidden away from me Jesus says, fill ye up the measure of your fathers. Context in this is the individual that was supposed to be doing the will of God that have decided we're going to take God's word and twist it and make it what we say so that we can have religious authority, we can have political authority so that we can have benefit. And this is what they did. And they fought against righteousness. They fought against justice. They fought against the Prince of Peace. They fought against the one that was coming to relieve the oppressed, came to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captive free. They spoke against him and his disciples. He said, fill ye up the measure. And I submit to you, when it's the same thing, it's the same thing. If you can find somewhere where it's not the same thing, look at the spirit of what is happening. These people were cruel, and then they were doing it in the name of God, and they were benefiting politically, economically, and they had so much sway over the people. The Messiah said, you serpents, you generation of vipers. Remember, Satan is called a serpent. You serpents, you generations of vi vipers, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? Being insensitive, being what they call benign neglect, being flippant and acting as if it doesn't matter, it just goes away. It is not something that is neutral. When the Messiah said you either gather with me or you scatter, or you for me or against me, since he's for righteousness, since he is for justice, rest fully assured, everything you do, you do matter as well as what I do. Wherefore, behold, I send, I send you unto prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you will kill and cru crucify. So when the Messiah sends prophets, people that will tell you about yourself, tell you about the injustices, tell you about the things that you've done. He says he's going to send unto you prophets, wise men and scribes. In other words, all scribes were wicked. Remember I said that. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Have not Christians, have not America, killed those that will speak against injustices? Is, is Malcolm X dead? Well, he was a Muslim. Did he tell the truth about injustice? Did you kill Dr. Martin Luther King? Somebody might say, Tim, his name was Michael King. He, he named himself after a person by the name of Martin Luther, thinking that he was a great reformer. You didn't have a problem naming us different names, did you? Every time. I have a book here called American Negro Slave Revolts. And whenever a man would raise up and try to be like George Washington or to be like Thomas Jefferson or Thomas Paine, he'd get killed. By just, just wanting to do righteous. Anytime a white man rose up to do right by us, not only would he get killed like John Brown, many times they would get in prison. I'm not gonna read it tonight. We would get put in prison, could get beaten and driven out of the city. Sometimes they would lose everything that they had. He said, some of them you will kill and crucify. Some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. That upon you may come. I want you to understand this as I read it. 
When you hear people say, this is what my ancestors did and I have nothing to do with this. I don't, I, I don't feel no guilt. I don't feel no compassion. I don't feel we owe anybody anything. I don't really want to hear it. I want you to shut up and let it die down. I want you to see why don't you, why they're not telling Jesus this? We didn't kill the prophets. We didn't kill those that were sent unto us. We didn't flog them. But the Messiah said, you're going to do the same thing. Okay, do you say that the, the same thing's not happening now? Please don't tell me we're, we're experimenting on. Please. Uh, please don't even talk about what we call the pandemic and the stuff that is coming out now. Even by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the son of Robert F. Kennedy Sr., that was the Attorney General of the United States, and the nephew of the President, John F. Kennedy, who was a Catholic, who in the early parts of America, America did not like Catholics at all. Don't tell me I'm wrong. I say it like some people say, I got the receipts. But he says, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel, were they alive when Abel was a living? No. To the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you slew. How is he saying that? That was way back. Whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Oh, Jerusalem, and it did come upon that generation, just in case you don't know it. In 70 AD, Titus came through and he destroyed and he killed and he put a lot of people to death. Do you think if Jerusalem rep, R-E-P-T, I think it's like R-E-A-P-T, ripped what they sold or they harvested what they sold, that America won't harvest what it sold, that Great Britain will not harvest what it has sown? The Bible says the wicked shall in they say the wicked shall be turned into hell and all of the nations that forget god psalm 9 17 he says oh jerusalem look at him these oppressors these people that have the same spirit of the fathers look at what he's doing jerusalem jerusalem you did kill the prophets and stone those which are sent unto you how often but I have gathered thy children together as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings and you would not I want the oppressor, I want those that have benefited from the oppressor, they have the same spirit of the oppressor to repent. Look at it. You would think that the Messiah said you killed my, those were my prophets, you killed my prophets. And I'm here now and I'm gonna get you. He said, behold, your house is left to you desolate. He came the first time to give conditions of peace and despair, but they would not. They would not do it, and they were justifiably damned for it. Now, since I started at the 29th verse, so let's go back and let's see how he talks about this. In Matthew 23, 23, Jesus says, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, what can we talk about? Hypocrites. For you pay tithe of your mint, your anise, your cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. And this is important for those that say we are not under the law, but we are under grace, but they still want the tithe, and all of the churches that still do the tithe, and those that still had the tithe and wanted the tithe from the time they first came to America, and we still had this going on. But listen to what it says. But you omitted the weightier matters of the law. And wait a minute. If you're saying there's no law, why is he talking about the weightier matters? You will keep the small, lightweight, easy part of the law. And say the weightier matters, we're not under the law. Anybody that teach you that does not love God or they don't understand the scripture. I mean, we're talking about Messiah. If you're saying that Messiah said, listen to what he says. He says, you gave up the way of matters of the law, judgment, which is justice, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done 
So they say you should still pay the tithe and not leave the other undone. What do we teach? We teach these you ought to have done and leave the other undone. You blind guides, he said, you strain a gnat and you swallow a camel. You strain at the weightier matters. You strain to get at tithe. You strain but you will swallow hook, line, and sink it that you don't have to obey the most high God. Oh, if I don't pay the tithe, he go get me. Here come the devourer. And you don't care nothing about justice, mercy, and faith. Listen to how Uncle Luke said. That's Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke really break it down because we still have these people that have benefited from the unjustly oppressed. And they have that same damnable spirit in their heart. And I submit to you, I believe that they would do us the same way. Look at how they look when you say, I don't want to hear that. This ain't Jesus. Jesus is the death, burial, and resurrection. That's a damnable lie. Without the ascension into heaven, without the ascension, without him receiving a kingdom as given in Daniel 7 and 13, he would not be the Lord of Lord. He would not be the kings of kings. He would not have fulfilled that which was given in Psalm 2, that when they heathen, he got the heathen for his inheritance. He would not be able to give us the inheritance that we see in Daniel 7 and 18. When you talk about the death, burial, and resurrection, that is not telling you about the judgment of God that we do. It's the judgment of God that he took upon himself for us, but it doesn't talk about the judgment of God that we have to fill up in ourselves in order to go through where the Bible teaches us that, yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, 2 Timothy 3 and 12. He says, woe unto you Pharisees. I don't want that. I want Luke 42. But woe to you Pharisees, you tithe of mint, rue, and all manner of herbs but you pass over judgment and the love of God. These you ought to have done and not leave the other undone. You want to tell me that when you take a person from their own land and their child, and if the, if the parent don't get baptized, you kill them and you take the children anyway and make slaves out of them, that was judgment. And the love of God, when you pack them on ships, 18 inches high from between the bottom of the boat and up above in many cases, not enough room to even move around between each other and some of them die and just lay there beside each other and the bodies burst. And all of the fluids coming out, going all over the place. And then some of them get raped and the bodily fluids come out when you lay them back down. And some of them got the opportunity to just jump off in the shark would eat them. And then you whip them with about a three or four inch strap, half inch thick, till the meat come out of the bones, I mean, out of the body. Then you work them from sun to sun because you said they're not human. And you make science to go along with it and invent something called phrenology. And we're going to look at the skull and tell you're lazy and you're good for nothing while you're building up the country. Is that the love of God? You rape a man, you rape a woman, and you say they don't have the opportunity to testify in court. Because the white man can't testify against a black man because I mean a black man can't testify against against the white man because he's not a citizen, he's not a human. But yet you built churches, you put steeples on it, you sung songs. What's the difference in what was done here and what the scribes and the Pharisees were doing? They were claiming to love God and neglecting the care of others. And if you can't see, if America can't see that after over 400 years of oppressive tyranny and trauma, that we said, we don't care. 
In other words, we'll give you more time for speeding. We'll give you more time for saying something you shouldn't say to the police officer. Or we'll give you more time if you change insurance companies and your insurance is lapsed, but you got another one. I have to give, I'm going to give two officers credit. To, uh, uh, the other day when insurance things showed up on, on my vehicle that it wasn't paid and it was paid, these officers treated me right. right. I really want to call their name, but I don't know if it would get them in trouble. But just put it like this. They went to Cab County and I give them honor for what they did. But under this system, they really didn't have to. So he says, this is what these people did. They left it out. And I submit that when we talk to people about our situation, they leave it out because they don't care. Listen to what the wise man Solomon asked God to teach him how to judge says, say in Proverbs 21 and 3. Let me read the verse above it. Okay. The Bible says in the verse above it, 21 and 1, the king's heart is in the hand of of Yahweh as the rivers of water he turneth it with us so ever he will this is why it's important for us to tell the truth this is why it's important for us to do the truth Yah has the ability to change the king's heart he did it with Nebuchadnezzar he did it with Cyrus etc we don't know whose heart he's going to change but if we act like everything is okay and if we won't say it because people's face get tight we are failing to do what god wants done he's used us either to incite people to change or to damn them because they want okay two every way of a man is right in his own eyes but yahweh pondereth hearts the hypocrite says he's doing god's ways he's doing god's thing he's doing to set up laws and things the way god wants it and they will claim that but the bible said yah ponders the heart verse three to do justice and judgment the word here is god's commandments is more acceptable to yah than sacrifice to do justice to do what's righteous and to do what is just is more acceptable to god than to go and sing songs to sing hymns then they have a trio, then they have a praise team, then they have a prayer band, then they have all the preachers that get up and say eloquently or to sit down at a desk like this under light and pontificate on God's word to do justice and mercy is more acceptable to God than sacrifice. It didn't say don't do it, but this is what he wants in the earth i want you to see something when when the messiah came to earth the bible said he was going to sit on the throne of his father david to do justice and righteousness what did habakkuk say about him when habakkuk foretold of the christ he says at the time when he was living he says the law torah god's instruction is slapped and judgment doth never go forth for the wicked come past, that means they surround about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. This is what was happening during the days of Habakkuk. These are the things that were going around during the time of the Christ. And this is what we've experienced. And when we talk about it, we still don't want justice to go forth. We still allow wrong judgment to go forth because many things are left like they are. And one day, either on this, on this Facebook, or on my other, on my other site, I'm going to start just reading some of the laws that was just put out. For instance, just one casual killing act. You kill a black man, no big deal. You're not going to be judged for it as long as he was trying to escape. Okay, that, that is, it's called casual killing act. Just look it up. You'll see there's more than one of them. Listen to Psalm 33 and 5. He that loveth righteousness and judgment, 
He loveth, they didn't have no that in there, talking about, yeah, he loveth the righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of Yah. You don't see it, do you? Do you see the air? Do you see thoughts? Do you see molecules? The earth is full of it, right? And since the earth is full of the goodness of Yah, you better believe justice will be served. If the people that have benefited and feel that they are above us, oh, we can trace back and go to the church fathers. You go, are you going to talk about going back to the church fathers and not the prophets? Are you going to go to those people that have been painted according to 1 Maccabees 3 and 48 to look like the Greeks? And say, these are the fathers that taught righteousness? Or are you going to go back to the fathers that the Messiah quoted, that his apostles quoted? And anytime we say something that the fathers say that we go along with, they quote what those people quoted, not anything new. It says it's full of it. And by it being full of it, judgment will be served at some time. In Jeremiah chapter 5, the Messiah was fulfilling what, that which Jeremiah was looking for. And aren't we supposed to be in him and he in us? Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 5 and 1, yeah, I say run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Why do you say Jerusalem, Tim? Because that's where Nebuchadnezzar was coming to execute judgment. But during the days of Denmark Vesey, during the days, during the time when they were hanging those people that wanted to get free, Benjamin Morgan and, and, and an other man, I think his name was Rotham um, Rutman. I, I'll be reading about him in a couple of days anyway. They were calling Charleston named after King Charles the Wicked, they were calling Charleston, Jerusalem. They were saying that that was God's city of peace, okay? So let, let's let the name that it was used then run to and fro throughout the streets of Jerusalem and see now and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man, if there be any that executed or do act in judgment or justice and seek is the truth and I will pardon it. One of the things that Denmark Vesey had said is that I'm, I'm going to try to do what I can to make these people repent, to acknowledge that they took scriptures from us, to acknowledge that they have twisted the scripture, to acknowledge that you hid scriptures from us and that you actually took the scriptures that you say that you used and you enforced them upon us and you did tyranny to us. Well, that was him. He was put to death for it. Do you think that maybe the reason that some black people, some, some black people are like Sambo. Black Sambo actually would whip Uncle Tom because Simon Legree wanted him whipped because Uncle Tom was actually putting cotton in the women's bag so that they wouldn't get a whipping and he'd take the whipping himself. Now, the real man, Josiah Hanson, there's some things about him, but you'll find out in the end, he did a great, magnificent thing for the people. But the point that I want to make right now, how many of us right now would care enough, not only for those of us that are oppressed, those of us that have lost millions and millions of dollars worth of labor, millions and millions worth of dollars worth of land and property, uh, trauma to the mind, trauma to the soul, lands taken and, and make Lake, so we can make Lake Lanier and do what we did in Forsyth County. That... How many of us are willing to run to and fro and tell the truth so that those that have benefited from it, those that are still a part of doing weekly can hear the truth and change and repent? Do you think that it was any real difference going on with the oppression? It was not based on what you call race. It was a caste system that they had set up themselves so that they could benefit. And he said he pardoned it. Wouldn't it be great to see your enemy, the ones that have been your enemy that have oppressed you forever turn to God? You say, no. Well, let's take a look and see how that works in the Bible. Can we do that?
Now, there was a man named Stephen that loved the Most High Yah and his son, the Christ, and had a great knowledge of the scripture and history. He had stood for those things that were right, and he had got some people told about the wickedness that they have done and all of the things that their fathers have done. If you read Acts chapter 7, you'll see he'll say your fathers did this, and you're the same kind of people, you're the same kind of people, you do the same thing, and they determined to kill him. So in verse 58 of Acts chapter 7, it says, and they cast him out of the city, him, Stephen, and stoned him. And witnesses laid their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord, Lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Okay. Now, knowing that this is what happened and this is not the end of a big book, you know, for the sake of time, we move along and somebody can go back and read it. And it's, it's going to be, it'll still be in your Bible too. And the Bible says they, lay, they laid it at the feet of a young man, okay? And the, na the name of the man was Saul. And it says here, and as for Saul, he made havoc of the church. That word here is ecclesia. So that's the assembly. He made havoc of the church, entering into every house, hailing men and women, committing them to prison. This is the kind of stuff that happened when Denmark rose up. This is the kind of stuff when Nat Turner rose up telling the Bible. This is the kind of thing that happened when black men learned the Bible and started speaking it. This is the kind of thing that happened to many of the abolitionists. And they would call them, I would listen to a man talk about Doucho during the days of Charleston and say, well, you know, we had to arrest one of those people that came out here talking to the field Negroes and telling them and getting them all excited. So Saul, he made havoc of the church. Saul was in the elite class. Saul was in the class of the caste system that we rule stuff. And we do it by the way that we see the scriptures. And we're not open to see the scripture is dealing with justice, mercy, and faith. We see that there's things to do with sacrifices. We see that there are things to deal with offerings. But we don't see that the Most High God was going to reveal himself through a person. He's done it before in the cloud. A fire, he's done it before in a cloud of pillar, he's done it in a burning bush, he did it when he came and showed himself to Manoah, he did it when he came and showed himself to Abraham before he destroyed Sodom, and we don't see it the way that he says it, and so therefore we feel it's open for us to interpret his word the way that we wanted it done. That's what they did. So the Bible says he was entering into every house, hailing men and women, and committed them to prison. This is what the man did. Let's move on because I, 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 you can go back and read all of this on your own. In the ninth chapter, first verse, it says, And Saul was breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, which was under the Roman authority, he was not the son. They were not the sons of living no more. They were actually tied with the government. They're all were in the position of authority over people in the caste system. So Saul was breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord and desired letters of, of and desired of him letters to Damascus and synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were women, or men or women, he might bring them bound, in other words, in shackles or tied up to Jerusalem. I would submit to you, this is what Paul was doing at this time. Is he not an oppressor? He is an oppressor. Is he a religious oppressor? Yes, he is. Is he wrong for what he's doing? Yes, he is. Is the government backing him? Yes, it is. Does he say he's doing for God? Yes, he does. Does he care for the afflicted? No. Does he care for the women? No. Does he care for the children? No. Does he care for the orphans? No. Because in his mindset, he's doing the will of God. When an individual has the wrong view of the most high God, they can be the most dangerous thing, especially if that individual was given that as the righteous way 
to do things and had nothing to do with setting up the system that is wicked. I've said something profound there. Many of us have taken some of the same wickedness or the same doctrine because that was given to us. There must come a time when we separate ourselves to the Most High God, reevaluate what we've been taught and say, what does God say? And let me go along with that. that, that that's what I got to say. Now, this letter is bound to Jerusalem. What are these letters? What I did was I determined within my soul, I said, I want to look it up. So this is what is called a New Testament background. So I'm not going to read all of it because I want to move a little quicker, but I want you to see what's in the, I think this is Baker or Zunderman, but it says, official letters of introduction. This is what the letters that he was talking about. Official letters of introduction authorized and recommending the sender were common. Josephus confirms that Palestinian agents would take orders from the Jew, Jerusalem Sanhedrin, Jewish communities, when they say Jewish, understand, at that time, we didn't have a Jewish like we have today. We're talking about people from Judea, okay? Uh, the communities outside of Palestine, they respected the high priest and the letters for him to authorize Saul to carry out his mission with the full cooperation of the synagogue. Is that not the same way that things happen to us? The full cooperation of the churches? The pastors, don't no, tell me I don't have the directors, the bishops, the schools, and the laws that they could do and bring us bound, sell us, whip us. And yet, we're not supposed to talk about these things. I'm not going to keep reading it because I want to move on. In Acts chapter 23, I mean 22 and three, because I, I want him to tell his own story, how God was able to change him from being an oppressor to be in benefit to the kingdom of God. So it's important for us to see God can use us. But when he gets rid of a person, he does it. And we should not be feeling sad when he executes his judgment. We should be just as happy when he executes judgment as we are when he saves somebody. Why? Because he's doing his righteous deeds. So in, in, in Acts 22 and 3, it says, I am a man verily, which am a Jew born in the city of Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous toward God as you all are all, if you slow down, was zealous toward God as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Is that justice? No. Is that mercy? No. Is that the love of God? No. Is that this is what they were doing in their religious caste system? Is this what was repeated in America? And here is the thing. Would we do the same thing if we were in charge today? Those that tell us to just preach Jesus. Those that say, well, our fathers did this and we didn't, and don't care what's the difference. I was going to read, but I'm not going to read it. I believe it's Psalm 50 and 17. Y'all wants to know what do you do to have my word, my law in your mouth when you hate instruction when you saw a thief you consented to him when you saw other wickedness you went along with it what's the difference y'all say you're not on my side he said i persecuted this way to the death binding and delivering into prison both men and women and as the high priest also does bear me witness and all the estate of the elders from whom i received letters we were in cahoots until the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them here bound to Jerusalem to be punished. We kidnapping people and taking them from where they are to bring them where we are. We're going to say we're going to give them judgments, which is not righteous judgment. So we're going to give them unjust judgment. We are going to give them oppression. Let's move to him talking again about it in chapter 26, verse 9. 
And he says, I verily thought within myself, I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. When people say that just preach Jesus, that was in the past. We got nothing to do with it. Forget it. Let it go. And I say to them, Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, to set the liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and to bring peace on earth, goodwill toward men. You cannot exclude the black man and say that's righteous even if you go back and say we hadn't evolved even if you go back and say that our color was wrong, even if you go back and say phrenology, say our skull didn't develop right, even if you go back and say psychologically something was wrong with us because we wanted to get free, I think they call it dryptophobia, dri something like that, we're af afraid. <sighs> You made up psychological terms in this country to keep the religious oppression and the legal oppression, which was married to do wickedly. Paul said he sought to do that contrary to the name of Jesus. He did not at that time know that Jesus was Lord, but in America, they claim to know that he was Lord, which is worse. It's still worse for them because they grew up on the Torah, but it's worse for these people that did it, that put themselves in the place of God because James 3 and 1 says, my brethren, be not many masters or teachers, knowing that you shall receive the greater condemnation. And he said, which thing I did also in Jerusalem and many of the saints I shut in prison unlawful locked up received authority from the chief priests on un un unlawful legal system and they were put to death innocent blood being shed and i gave my voice to them in other words he knows enough about the law to know i'm guilty because i spoke with them not only did i do it i spoke with them i submit jesus said if you don't gather you scatter if you're not for me you're against me when you say just preach jesus and you don't care about, I ain't tell you to kiss our bottom and say, do what's righteous. And you say, y'all don't deserve it. Fill up the measure of your fathers. I'm just saying it like that. And he says, he says, I shut up in prison, received authority of the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them and punished them off in the synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. How many people did you think were beaten and compelled to lie on somebody else? How many of our people you think were beaten? How many people you think been locked up in jail six months, four months, a year that were innocent? And you you want to go home and see your child again, your mom about to die? And you, you go ahead and you plead that you were guilty to someone you weren't compelled to blaspheme, compelled to lie, to compel, to say, I go along with your view of God when it's not righteous. That's what he said he did. And being, in other words, because they knew what was right and you compelled them to do something else. Being exceedingly mad against them are persecuted to strange cities. This is what the man said. Tim, let's move on down. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 9, he tells about himself. Paul says, I am of the least of the apostles. He said, I'm of the least of them. He said, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. He said, because I persecuted the church of God. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace, which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was within me. A man that hated God, a man that hated his people, a man that was an oppressor, the man that locked people up, the man was the cause of many being de dead, kidnapped, losing property, etc. And God turned him. And then was able to be a benefit to those that he had hurt before. Does that not matter to somebody? Why am I just being stupid? You know, sometimes people say, dear, you seen that wrong. That ain't the way it was. I, I say it was. That was the way it was. Let me show you something else about that. Let me move down here to Acts chapter 9, verse 4. When he was doing that, he was persecuting the Christ. Now, this is what I want to say. Since Jesus has never died 
after he died the first time to die again. Had he came back and walked to the earth, like you see in some movies sometimes, and this person is immortal, but nobody knows it. Had he been riding on one of those ships in the bottom as a slave and been branded and been whipped and killed, but you didn't know he came back again. And for many hundred years, he's gone through all of these things and been beaten, seen his mom, not his mom, but yeah, the, he let, seen his sisters and brothers, rape, kill, friends, whatever. And he said, these things have happened and it's been bad. This is what goes, which went on. This is why the people are like they are. You need to do something about this. Something need to be done, America. And they said, well, just preach Jesus. You think you say, yeah, you're right. Just forget about that and move on. Let's move forward. Do you think he'd agree with that? You see, because when you see us, they're supposed to see him in us. He told him in Matthew chapter 10, when you go out, you preach the kingdom of God and he that receives you, receive me. And he says, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he says, I'm Jesus, whom you persecute. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks, okay? So he wanted to know what he wanted him to do. Well, he sent him to a man named Ananias. And so Ananias, when he told him about it, Ananias said, Lord, I have heard many things of this man, how much evil he's done to the saints in Jerusalem. I've heard what American Christianity has done. I'm making a parallel because Saul had done evil. But if I'm talking about American Christianity, we know some people don't know how much evil American Christianity has done. And that's sad. That's to our detriment. Because when you try to tell them, they say, I ain't never heard this before. Well, you may not never heard about mitochondria before, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It says, he answered and said, Lord, I heard by many how this evil this man has done to the saints, and he has authority of the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But Yah said unto him, Go your way. He is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. I submit to you, if we ever get to the place that we're sold out for Yah, and not have respect to persons. So what if he's a bishop in an Episcopalian or a Presbyterian of he's so far somebody so to be great? When the Lord turns the waters of the rivers, he can turn the king's heart, he can turn the oppressor's heart, and the oppressor can become an ally. Our God is the, our job is to do the will of God. Did you see that Jesus himself did that to Paul? Is it not that we should be doing the same thing? Well, you might say, no, it ain't. Well, I, I'm going to show you something. In Acts chapter 9, verse 13, when I showed that, let me move on down to the 29th verse. It says he went to him and he told him, Brother Saul, receive your sight. Scales fell as it were from their eyes. The people were amazed. But this is what I want you to hear the people say. In verse 21, all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? And he came hither for this intent that he might bring them back bound to the chief priests, but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is the very Christ. And after many days fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. He became a lover of those that he once denigrated. Well, Paul continually loved these people. Yes, the oppressors. I didn't say he loved them and changed. He loved them and told them the truth. Let me give you a little taste. In the in the tenth chapter of Romans, verse one, it says, "Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end, the telos, the goal of the law of righteousness to everyone." that believeth. I submit to you that Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. 
That's what we read about in Romans 8 and 4, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. I submit to you that when I talk like this, I would love to see American evangelicalism. I would love to see those that did the wickedness that they did to our ancestors submit themselves to the righteousness of the Most High God because Christ is the goal, the end of the law to them that believe. But as long as you teach that there is no law, but you make law. You put yourself in the position of God most high. And what you do is you leave God's word on the ground to be trampled. And justice will not be done until the most high either calls you to repent or move you out of the way. He has his way. He has his way. Lastly, there were some people that didn't want to hear him. And the people that didn't want to hear him here in 26. I don't believe that's one I want. I want the one in 13 where he said he just let them go and he brought the repentance to them and they didn't want it. He gave it to somebody else. I'm truncating for time now. In Acts 26, here's the last one that I want to read you about Paul out of this. Paul's he, when he told this man Agrippa about what's going on in his life. And he told him about him, Jesus telling him, he's the one that you crucified. Verse 19 is what I want you to see. This same man that had been in with the people of authority, this same man that had been with the hypocritical people, this same man that had the ability and knowledge now that God had busted his heart and he repented and he's doing right. He's trying to do right by his people. He's trying to do right by those that were hypocritical. Listen to what he's telling the governmental official. It says, whereupon, O Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but I first showed to them of Damascus and Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea and to the Gentiles, that means the people of the ethnic group Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. I'm not just telling people about what has happened. I'm not just telling them that y'all did this or this was done to us, and I do mean it. You are the children of your fathers. You are all are the ones that set up statues of Jane, Mary, and Sims and set up one Jefferson Davis to say we were stamped from the beginning to be nothing but slaves. Jefferson Davis, president. Yeah, he just said it. But he says, I'm talking to you and I was talking to them to repent and do works. You, yeah, Jesus, that you preach, don't say do works. That's not the Jesus Paul talk and do works. In other words, what would the works meet for repentance? Look at Zacchaeus, whatever I stole, I pay back. I ain't stealing no more. And it says, for these cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, having therefore obtained help from God. I continue to this day witnesses, both to small and great, saying none of the things, listen, than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. They tell you don't even deal with it. And when you do that, they say, well, I preach Jesus. It's a whole lot different than what Paul taught. But you benefited. And I believe you would be the same kind of people that your ancestors were unless you repent. Let's look at Colossians and let's end with Colossians. I want to end with Colossians. In Colossians 1 and 9, Paul talked to a group of people in Colossae. This is not a city that the Hebrew people had in the beginning, but they've been scattered throughout the earth. So now they've mixed in and then you got the other people that have done what they've done and you got other governments. And Paul says when he talks to the, these people, He's already started the letter. I didn't start at the beginning. He said, for this cause also, since the day we heard of it, we do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This is a man that at one time did not have all the wisdom. He did not have the knowledge. He did not have all the spiritual understanding. And now knowing what's needed to be done, this is how he is presenting the gospel of the Christ to people. This is how he prays for them, that you might walk worthy of the Lord, not just say I'm a Christian, not just say Jesus or preach Jesus, that you are worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. That's what you are ordained to. That's what Paul said you were ordained to in Ephesians 2 and 9 and 10. 
and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's what he said grace would give us in Titus chapter 2, 11 and 12, I believe it is. Strength with all might according to his glorious power. He said the gospel would do that. The truth to reveal word of God is the power of God unto uh, all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks to God and the Father that have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He said us and a man like that. We can't stop telling the truth. I know we can look at people and say, they ain't never. Maybe they won't. But your job when your opportunity, let God use you. He, he knows whether it's going to condemn. He knows whether it's going to indict. Be faithful. He says, giving thanks to God and the Father that made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life who have delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of this his dear son. Do you understand how powerful that is when the oppressor turns from his oppression, knowing how insidious oppression is, how all-consuming it is, and he was delivered? How much more did he want other people delivered when he saw that he was delivered from something greater than what he was doing himself because his was eternal damnation? You could damage somebody's life. You can damage their mind, their psyche. But he was oppressed by the wicked one to be damned. Verse 14, whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, who is the invis he was the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. This man preaches this. Is he preaching Jesus? Is he preaching Jesus? It don't matter how you live. No, he's not. Let's move quicker. It says, for by him all things are created that are in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities and powers, all things were created by him and for him. That's why he gives his allegiance to him. 17 is before all things and by him all things consist. He's before the Sanhedrin. He's before the hypocritical people. He is before my opinion. He is a, he's before anything that I don't want to go out here and, and preach to these people because they don't like me. They've stoned me. They beat me. He is before all things and he sent me and I went. He is the head of the body of the church, not the Sanhedrin, not a group of people. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that, by, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all fullness should dwell. When you start talking about just preach Jesus, are you talking about all fullness of justice, righteousness, peace, long-suffering, joy, gentleness, goodness, faith, the absence of lies, making restitution for things that need all fullness dwells in him. When he came, Zacchaeus, he didn't tell Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, you know you've been stealing. No. He met the fullness of the Most High God in his son, in his heart, knowing what the Bible is said. I ain't been doing it. I'm doing it now. But look, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself, I say whether they be in earth or things in heaven, the Most High God is going to reconcile us to our position on the earth where we're supposed to be in him, our position where we're supposed to be with him in heaven, our position of where we're supposed to be with one another when we do what the rest of this passage teach. It says that you who are sometimes aliens and enemies in your mind by wicked works now have to be reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. There's no preaching Jesus when you still blame when you still need to be reproved, when you still, yes, preach Jesus. We don't care nothing about what you go through. We don't care nothing about you all being unfairly incarcerated, unfairly, whatever different kind of penalties come out of the law, unfairly in your school, and you pay just as much for everybody else. We don't care. That's not unblameable. That's not unreprovable in his sight. This is what Paul said. This is what I'm trying to teach you all to get to this position. That this is my preaching of Jesus. Let's do righteousness and justice in earth. Notice verse 2. It says, if you continue in the faith. There, I know they tell you once saved, always said, Paul preaching Jesus says, if you continue in the faith. 
grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, the church. I know people tell you Christ had paid it all. He fulfilled it all, but there's something he didn't. He says, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation. That don't mean dispensationalism. That means the administration of God, which is given to me for you. Even the mystery, which was here from ages and generation, but now is made manifest. Hidden the people, because we won't give you the Bible. Hidden the people, because we took you from your land, your culture, and your heritage. But the most High wants us to know what it is. And what is that mystery? To whom God would make known what is the richest of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's who we preach, warning every man. I know most people, Christianity don't have a warning. Paul said, we warn every man and teach every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect, perfect in Christ Jesus. Well, I, I submit, he said, this is why he labors, striving according to the work and that worketh in him mightily. If we go back and we look and we just look at what we see, those who have benefited from and off the unjustly oppressed, they often show the same damnable spirit in themselves as their ancestors did. I ask, would it be any different if they lived the, during the good old days? I think it would be the same. But we see the Messiah, he himself cried, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, kill all the prophets. I came, I wanted to help you. But the judgment that came all the way from Abel to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, is going to come on you. And it did. He took a man, Saul, a man that was an oppressor, had religious authority, was tied in enough that he could do things politically, and he worked against the people to oppress. And the Messiah turned him, everybody that was with Paul, those people, they didn't turn, Paul turned. So you want to know why history matters. You want to know why I talk about things that America did. Unless fruit is brought forth for repentance, we're going to, in this country, fill up the measure of those that started it in hypocrisy and wickedness and left off justice, mercy, and faith. If that's the way you want to leave it, you can have at it, but beware. The Lord knows how to separate those that have done his will from those that didn't. He knows how to reserve the wicked until the day of judgment. And just like he was able to spare Lot, he can spare those of us who want to do righteously and tell the truth. Do we want, do we want to bring justice on the earth? We're going to have to talk about things and we're going to have to show what God has said and work towards it if we want to do his righteousness in the earth. I'm not even just talking about make justice. I'm saying doing his righteousness in the earth. And then however he sees fit to bring justice, it's going to be brought. He has multiplicity of ways of doing it. Most of the time, we don't even care about it being done because we just saying preach Jesus, a false Jesus, a mythological Jesus. With that, let's, let's think about who we are and the type of Christianity, a biblicism that we've accepted. It's just only mental. It has nothing to do with how we live, nothing to do with righteousness and justice in the earth. Father, I thank you that every situation that we have, for some reason, it shows up. It shows up that we got that problem that continually persists 
men wanting to rule over men and take your place. But your word say he that rule over men must be just ruling in the fear of Yah. Help us to do it. Help us to help those that don't want to do it and don't care. See, you sent your son here for a reason. Help us to have the mindset to help his goal and purpose be fulfilled in the earth, whether it's to gather, to scatter, to gather together in barns, or for him to have them burned. Help us to be faithful. Amen. Amen. And amen. Okay. I see on here that that word I was trying to get out of my mouth to say, dreptomania, Samuel A. Cartwright, 1851. That's where they made that word up. Thank you, precious. I open my class now for, for discussion, if there's any discussion to be had tonight on the class. I, I hope that I was clear. It's a whole lot easier to be clear within myself than sometimes than displaying things because I don't know where people are in their knowledge base. So class is open. Adrino, can you bring me a pillow, please? I'm being funny. At least I think that I am. No comments tonight? What happened to the camera? Well, I think, okay. What happened to your camera? Wait a minute. I, I barely hear you. Let me put this. Where are you at? Wait. Say it again. What happened? Where you to at? <laughs> What'd you say, Andrina? What happened to your camera? Um, wait a minute. This first of all, my Bluetooth, my yeah, my Bluetooth actually picked up my conference line, and I don't know when it did that. My camera is back. Yeah, because it went from a nice volume to a lower volume, but it was still very clear. So, yeah, this Bluetooth right here, I don't have the case with, in here with me, but I got my eye on it now. Go ahead, Gary. Can you hear me? I do very well. <laughs> don't laugh at me. Um, um, I, I really like the supporting scriptures that you gave. I've written down Zacchaeus as an example, but I think, and I, this is something that you talked before, but to mention that kids, I think, and having conversations with people and they say teach Jesus or preach Jesus, I think a question will be, do you, do you recall the conversation that Christ had with that kid? And then get them to talk about it. And most of the time, they're probably not really going to know it. They might remember something from a song that kids was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. They yep. might remember something like that, him being up in a tree. Um, and I, I, and again, they're, they're, they're going to probably have an, a so-called answer for that because that's before he was died, that he, before he was crucified and was risen and so forth. But to get that, maybe to get that conversation, because a lot of times people they need to go away and be and be, let's say, either rebuked or indicted, as you were saying. And part of the message, and then they're going to have to wrestle with why well, I know I'm lying. In the, one of the conversations we had on last week, I caught I caught was saying something about Romans one. I, it wasn't the last one; it was it was a recent one, and and I thought it too because sometimes we go away from people and they're like, okay, they didn't get it, but the Bible said they have no excuse, and, and I and and I, I so agree with what she said that. The Bible says they're lying, and that that's helped me in the past because I'm like, keep trying, and keep trying, and keep trying. But well, you fighting real hard. You fighting real hard. What's, what 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 is the struggle? Sometimes, I mean, in a given an argument, you you do want to prove it, but um, so what what was the conversation, and why why was that kid 
um, doing that. And they would say, well, we didn't, maybe they'll say, well, we didn't do anything wrong. I, I thought about, I think this first Samuel, somewhere in 21, 22 with the Gibeonites, and it may not be exactly the same, but a, a good bit of time had passed. That's true. When, uh, like, was it, was it, um, was it Joshua? Joshua. And they trick when they trick them and like okay we've been you know coming with all these worn clothes and dust and all this kind of stuff and they made a promise and God like you you made a promise there have been some promises made there have been some promises broken but then when you find out Sodom killed some people it don't look like God forgot he didn't it don't look like it and so there's some things that's happening in David like okay you know um. Something ain't right, and they, they and they and they went back, and so people love. They claim they love the Bible, and I think we need to call them on it. Well, what do you love and what do you not love? Which verses? Do you, and I know you've done this. Which verses are in, inaccurately put in there? You know, and and, and that gets to so getting the man thing. But in the sense of well, Rome, Romans fifteen and four it says these things are written for us tonight to be understanding and, and grow by. And I was thinking also of, um, I wrote this down, where, where is it? Uh, Esther, I think when you were showing that slave Bible about two weekends ago, I think it was on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. I pulled mine out because I wasn't, I wasn't watching. Um, I mean, I wasn't, um, I'm thinking regard. I wasn't looking at Zoom. So I went and got my Bible, my slave Bible. And I was looking at, and I think Esther, was one that was left out. I think the whole book of Esther was left out. And I think, while it's not the, the exact fit, Mordecai was remembered. And then you see the whole atrocity of where um, Haman wanting to kill these people was left out because we get the we get the fight back. We, we get the, um, to counter all this historical mess that y'all doing, but they left that out. But the king was like, okay, let me let me remember something. There's, there's just so many scriptures where there, there, there is this um, time passes and the Lord like, okay, that fulfill, fulfill up the measure. That makes me think of the, 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 the wicked Amorites, the iniquity of the Amorites. Yes. It's like it's got a time where it's going to be full but people are extremely ignorant and willingly so uh, is that wrong that's romans too and i think jeremiah so well it's all over the bible willingly ignorant because you hide in something yes and, and it's like well why, why is it that the light when when we get to forget all our history but y'all can y'all can praise and worship every forefather you can praise and worship it. I, I, I just get tired sometimes hearing about iniquity. So let's 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 just go a little academia here. When you study literature classes, right? The survey lit class. Okay. The beginning one. And what they what the a survey class what it, um, the, sort of the idea of it is you get a, a shimmer. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> weird. You get a shimmering of this, a shimmering of that. A little bit about this, let's say the 1400s, the 1500s, the 1600s. This is a survey lit class. They call it culture and civilization. Culture and civilization is basically governments, kingdoms, dominions, geography. And so they'll say, well, let's look at what this king was doing. And then, of course, it is painted in, in, in a tone that is always favorable to somebody in Europe because Europe was always, 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 always doing stuff. But then you get a little bit on architecture. Oh, this was the Goths. These were the Arabs. These were when when the when the, the Romans came into. And so we're looking now at architecture. Is it an arc? Is it looking something like a I'm gonna call it a, a triangular steeple? So we're learning about all this stuff. Then you look at art, expression of man's freedom. That's painting. That's literature. You get to learn how the, the French wrote it, freestyle. This demonic thing. They don't call it demonic in the book. But it's like when you just like I forgot there was a there was some an expression. Is it like cha it's channel writing, something like the, channel writing? The, the muse. Yes. Yes, and it's, they, they would call it the muse, and we know what muse is. You taught us a long time. 
hospital about amusement. But this is this is like channel writing. So all of this is what what what's my point? We go back in academia, whether it's Spanish, whether it's French, I, I did very little German, but I, I I know the I know how do you call it? The the design, the 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 format, uh, and I, I can't think of a better way to say it. When you do that, you learn a little bit about the history, but we will esteem that. Like, you've heard of, of Sartre, 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 play with these it, Camus, Camus, and all these people, what's it, the, 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 the Descartes, Descartes, yep. all these people, you take it from science, you get, uh, uh, what's his name, the Darwin. Yep. So why are we going back and looking at all these people? So you get to praise all of these people, but we get to erase yours. It makes no sense. And like you were talking about Hitler tonight, and I think you mentioned a, a group of black people. The Herero people? Her Herero. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 really, it's really, really, really interesting in design. So to be able to um, bring these things up, is is good and especially and I'm I'm definitely saying with scripture, but what we have is it's just like Cain. The pun I know I'm guilty, but the punishment is too great. The punishment is too great. Therefore, be quiet. But the blood, the blood is is, is going to cry out whether it's like it's just going to come to us or not because the iniquity is full and it, and I, I Anne was saying and I keep saying Anne because she just has so many good things to say. She said they scared. I think she said that one time. She will. So any any I, I let's see there's something else I wrote down. Um, well anyway, those those are some things that I was thinking about. Uh, but it was it was good. I, I like I like you starting in Matthew two and three. I like I'm pulling out something. I, I enjoyed the whole day because it, it, I'm, I'm picking up Paul Polly. And sent us in a while and put them in the basket. Maybe I hadn't oh. done it in a long time. <laughs> okay. No, I, 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 no I that's not true. Sometimes I'm sleepier than other times, and I'm like, and, and I'm, I'm trying not to do that all the time, but just be honest. But I mean, even on, on times when I'm sleepy, if I might be sleepier, I'm still picking up pop ups, putting them in the basket because what I, what I find is sometimes when I don't, I'm ready to answer. You all be like bringing stuff back to my mind, and then it's just like I just end up, I just start talking. But I'm like, okay, if I had to say, oh, I might have said I said this, I said this, but I don't remember. But I know it's like he's like, here it is, boom. And to the Peter, like pray for boldness. That I think is that the how did it go? Acts four and twenty nine. That it's about that they would be able to speak. I'm gonna turn to it right quick. And you was all up in the I'm like, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I am not mad. This is Acts, I think it's 4 and, if it's not 29, it's either 31 or something. I think it's 4 and 29. I'm getting ready to share my screen with you so you can see it. There it is, 29. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using my phone. I, okay. I, every time I pull my Bible out, of it, I use my phone, my Bible on my phone. Okay. Or I might just be living it if, if, if I'm trying to do that simultaneous thing. But anyway, it says, and now, behold, and now, Lord, behold, they're threatening and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness, um, that, with them, say it right, all boldness, they may speak thy word. And I'm like, oh, he's asking for the, the ability to speak, and we know he's telling the truth. So I'm like, okay, that's really good. And so I guess I'm gonna say last week this for now. I, you was you was in Colossians. No, was it the Luke is what I'm talking about? I think he says that with not they terrify. Of your adversaries. Yeah. So not they terrify. You know, it, it, when 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 you when you live like, okay. Um, I ain't gonna say that it's not gonna be some trepidation. I'm, I'm not saying please come over here and, and beat me, but at the same time, if it's like that's what's gonna happen, I feel like I don't, well, it just the, the scriptures just give so many examples of like them going through it. And I mean, like that doesn't really take away some of the sting. Don't call that negative. That's what he takes away the sting. <laughs> anyway, I 
just punch some of these things. So it, it was, it was, it was, it was I'm, I, I will quit right here. So if anybody else might have something to say. Well, I thank you for your comments because when when trying to run a parallel, and I know that there's a lot that's similar and it's not all the way exactly, then yeah. as I try to qualify what I'm saying as I go, uh, I, I believe it's something that just need to be said though, because anybody can say, I, I ain't never gonna say that. I don't see why you say so keep saying something to them, let them die. Of those that still were not ordained to salvation, they were doomed, but it was worse because Paul gave them what was needed. And he told them that one time in Thessalonians, I didn't read it tonight. He said that they always contrary to everybody. Let them fill up their measure. He said it just like the Christ. But I looked at the time and I said, you know, I covered the thrust of what I wanted to cover. But yeah, Paul said, let them, let, let them fill it up. And then the other time he said, well, you have judged yourself unworthy, but he brought it to them. He brought it to them. And if anybody would have had an excuse, he had an excuse. I mean, I've been on the top side. Shoot, why well, I want to be down here and suffer with these people. It's, it's unfortunate because it's like you know, the, the malefactors on the cross, we see an humble, an humble person. He said, he, 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 he was honest. He said, we know we up here because we ought to be. Yep. And we, 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 there's a few who recognize it. And, uh, but the, the, the vast majority is not. And so, I mean, we understand it's going to be a small, a small, a narrow path. I guess that's what Steve Gray get that. I think he's the one that says a narrow path. It's a narrow path. I never really got it. <laughs> it's a narrow path, but um, to, 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 to be faithful and say it. Um, the song with, with the savor unto life and others. Uh, how does it go? The song with the um, savor to those that are being saved, we're the savor of life unto life. And those that are being uh, yeah. those that are being condemned, we're the savor of death unto death. Yeah. Um, it was it was a uh, it was a good message. Thank you very much. We're not getting like anything that we can even use to to to, to articulate. After this series, it's really bad. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And okay, almost. I'm, I'm, I'm through. Oh, anyone else? You were just getting good, Gary. Why you had to cut off? Wait a minute, and, uh, I think I hear um, somebody trying to say you something. The lane. And I don't yes. hear I don't know if they have their volume on. I got my volume on. Damn, your powers might be too strong. Stop. It looked like Elder Lane trying to say something. But I, I think your phone it. may be muted. Yes, I am. Let me see. No. You can't no, hear him. I'm not muted. What are you say, Andrina? You can't hear him and you can't hear me either. We're on, on Zoom. So y'all can hear me now? We can hear you. You can't hear you us. You can't hear us. We can hear you, real. Okay. So he's on Zoom, and that's why he, we can't hear him. Yeah. Okay. okay. But anyway, I'm greeting y'all in oh, fair. Yeah. No, sir, don't talk. Well, don't talk yet, Elder. We want everybody to hear you. Okay. Uh, I think, okay, sick. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make Zoom play where we can hear him, okay? Okay. I'm going to try to make Zoom. I'm going to try to be magical. Not wicked magical now. Give me a second. Zoom. Zoom. Here. Zoom. I hear him saying Zoom, but let me open the Zoom. Elder Lane, I, I, sometimes me not being as technologically advanced as I want to be, it shows up, but I don't want to show up every time. All right, I got it. It's getting ready to open. There it is, right there. And let me click here. Now say something and see if I can hear you. 
Okay. Happy New Year to you all. Can y'all hear him? He said Happy New Year. Can y'all yes, hear Yes, sir. Him? You were the only one that could hear us. Okay. We right. heard, I heard him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I I I've been I've been in in the circle, but I've been in Kanyada. A lot of times I'll be on Facebook where I can't communicate, but uh, tonight I'm able to get in Zoom. But anyway, right. uh, I got in late, uh, but from what I picked up, it was a, a good lesson, and uh, I'll look at it again on. Uh, on YouTube later, because matter of fact, I'm on there right now. I stay on there. I lay up here and I watch all of it. But anyway, uh, it's uh, it's been a whole month and I haven't spoke to you guys since last year. But uh, I just want you all to know that I'm still here. I'm still a member of the family, even though I'm just. Thank you. Break, Elder, you're breaking up. up. I ain't all the old, you know. You went very <laughs> digital, Elder. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's real, uh, very educational. You asked us a question about why you I say just preach Jesus. What's all the name? I couldn't find him. I couldn't find him. What happened? Lost him. Oh, okay. But uh, hopefully he'll call him. He can call on this number. I I can tell him he can call on this number. It'll be it'll be more it'll be I'm gonna say more easier. <laughs> you okay. Know, so yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. okay, great. You're back. Okay, go back and tell us what you were telling us before, because we didn't nah. hear it. Okay, I was saying that he uh, he had asked us in the Sunday school class to watch his uh his three day ago sermon. I think it was last Saturday. Right. And, yeah, and uh, like I said, I watched it twice. I can't find the flaws. You didn't. I couldn't find that you left out or missed out on. You know. Uh, okay. I looked at it. Matter of fact, you know, when when you don't see me, I be listening. You know, I've been listening, but tonight I was able. A lot of times, my phone. I don't know if it's the phone sometime or me, but we can't connect. But I be here and I be there, you know. And like tonight, I was having a problem with Amazon. And I've been on the phone with them since 5 o'clock this afternoon. I done got cut off four times. And finally, I get a lady about 9 o'clock, and she comes on, and she resolved the problem. And then I was able to tune in. But I will go back and listen at you when you post it on YouTube later. The part okay. that I did this, you know, because like I said, but I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, it's a prosperous year, it's a new year, and we're going to grow and do bigger and great things, you know, and you, you're getting, you're really getting in there real deep, you know. And, well, uh, I, I thank you. Keep me in your prayers, cause I I need it, cause I I, I want to be effective for our King. Well, you being effective, I mean, I can't speak for nobody else, but like I say all the time, man, like since I've been listening to you, you make me go look for stuff to understand. You know, cause a lot of times you'd be talking above me, but then when I go read it, kind of read it slow to myself, I understand it, you know? Okay. But, that's you that's know, you beautiful. Push, you know, you push me. You make me go want to find out, you know, and understand more and more, you know? And I told you that a long time ago. I mean, 
uh, <laughs> I have grown, I must say, spiritually and educated more in the last year than the whole 70 some years of life. Uh, I never, I mean, I always believe, I always put time in, but I never put this much time in. Where, you know, football, soap operas, this and that had my attention. Now, you know, I'm, I'm studying, trying to learn. I'm trying to do more. And like you say, if they take the Bible away from us, what do you have in your head? Yes. You know, what you got in your head? Nothing, you know, because you ain't put nothing in, you know? So in order to put something in, you got to read, memorize. And that's what I've been doing. Listen, I both of my cars, my truck and my car, both of, you know, they, uh, they meet the right to when I get in the truck, my phone don't even have to be on. And it automatically start reading scriptures, you know? So I don't listen to the whole Bible. And I'm going back through listening again. That's beautiful. <laughs> I, I, you know, I ain't going to say I read it, but I don't listen to it. And I'm studying, you know, I, I used to listen to the gospel stations, but they didn't got more uh, comical now than they <laughs> got religious, you know? So, uh, and like I say, maybe I'm getting too smart for them or whatever. I don't know. But it's beautiful. And Adriana, Gary, and Pastor Tim, it's been a pleasure in my life knowing you guys. And I really keep y'all in my prayers. I want y'all to keep me in y'all's because I just want to go higher and higher in knowledge, you know, in knowledge. You know, so, and you, everything you teach, I can read it. See, you don't do theory. I mean, you got some uh, classics where you do your books on Black history and stuff like that. And that's very educational too. You know, because I was listening to you the other day, how the slave masters only taught us like, X, Y, Z number of uh, chapters of the Bible. I said, "Hi, how, how they can? Well, and then I had to stop. They can do that because they, uh, excuse what I'm going to say, and I don't mean to step on nobody's toes. They're white folks. They can do that. Hey, they white and they say so. That's it. That's it. And they can do that. Okay. They can, They can teach us what they want to teach us, but see, they didn't know if they give us a little bit, we're going to take a whole lot because now we're reading all 60 some books and all the chapters. Ain't none of them cut short. You know, we can buy a King Jan version of the Bible at any Bible bookstore. So you can't shortcut us no more. You can't just let us know what you want us to know. And that's why I tell all the brothers. Don't take man word for it. Take God word for it. Read it for yourself. Yes. You know, read it for yourself. Hallelujah. And I done got, and me and my brother, we be talking, you know, like he's, he on one side of the street and I'm on the other side. I told him at the end of the day, but guess what, bro? I said, we both struggling for the same thing. Second coming of Christ. I don't care how you get there. And I don't think you should care how I get there just since I get there. You know? Mm. Cause, you know he like and i don't know i, I guess but i ain't gonna get into that but i you i, know, I, I don't think i'm sorry i'm sorry elder continue i just should say i love him to death but adrian i i always like your comment and when you was talking about them books of the bible when it was uh last tuesday or was yes sir tuesday? yes sir yeah man I mean, you was on point, and you wasn't let you wasn't giving Pastor no slack. <laughs> you wasn't giving him no slack, oh. you know. And he wasn't bringing it, but you bring it for him. I said, "Go right on." I said, "She in? It. She she there?" And 
But what about this? How many uh, texts did they give us out of this book? I said, mm hmm. I said, yeah. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. I said, go back. Let me see that again. Pull that chart <laughs> up. You're oh, right. Man. You're yeah, right. You, to, uh, yes, sir. you know, it's like I say, I live here sometime and uh, shoot, I done went back to some of his sermon, his uh, classes back in. Uh, in 2000, mm. you know, that's when he had the clean head, the clean face, and all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I uh, might have it again one day, but I don't know when. <laughs> it might I, fall out. I look, one day. I look at you now. I say, oh, he gone dreads on us, you know. I <laughs> said, but that's it. As long as the word. Long as the word don't change, you can change your appearance. Just don't change the, the teaching. Yes, sir. I, I don't mm -hmm. particularly care for somebody to just look at me and know I'm going to be talking about the Lord. I, listen to my mouth. That's what That's I need it. you to do. Listen to my mouth. Because I go shave everything off my face and look. And <laughs> no mustache, no hair, bald head. And now you might think I'm a, what they call that. They might now think I'm a Buddhist. No, yep. just, just listen to what I say. That's all I, I do. That's all I do. Like no, I I'm say, not talking I mean, about you. I'm, see, remember, I, I'm out in the public a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I prefer yeah, like people being... to not know what I believe just by how I look. Because if they assume something, you, don't, you really don't know. You really don't know. I look at a man, I don't know what he believe. Let me hear you talk, sir. Or you could tell me you're a Christian. I want to know what kind. I don't know what that mean. Ooh. Ooh. Boy, you know, it's been hitting home. It's been hitting home. It's been hitting home. And a lot of people are learning now. It ain't just about how much money you put on the table. You know, it ain't about how how fancy you dress. You know, it's what you believe, what you can say. God have elevated you from the first grade to the second grade. You know, through the word, not through theory, not believing one person. You know, through the word. You know, and 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 Deacon Jackson opened up a can of worms in our Sunday school at the church. I mean, our Bible study at the church. You know, and uh, they got to come back and have another class because he he put drunkenness on on blast. You know, even scripture say, "Be he not a drunker." Be he not a slave to strong drink, but he don't say don't drink. See, so, so Charles Deacon Jackson, he want to know why am I unsaved because I take a drink and I don't get drunk? Uh, am I a slave? You know, uh, uh, anywhere he put it. Where Bishop had to like, oh, 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 well, oh, okay, we're gonna have to come back to this one, you know. And uh, I, I admire that because, like I said all the time, it, it's nowhere in the scriptures it say don't drink, and he all scriptures say be he not a drunker, or be he not a slave to strong drink. So. If you know you're a person, you can't just drink one drink and quit, or maybe two and quit. Don't fool with it because you That's ain't right. strong. It's too strong, strong for you. You you you're not you, able. You, you're not able to handle it, so don't <laughs> fool with it. And I say, and he said, he he really, you know, and I'm glad he's bringing it out to that point because like it's so sick. Of, Hearing people saying, I gave up my alcohol and my cigarettes and I'm saved. 
But you pass by your brother and don't speak to him. Oh, weightier. The Bible says oh. weightier matters of the law. Uh, that's it. That's it. So, but anyway, I love them all. And uh, one of my favorite mothers is in the hospital. I found out tonight. I, I know she was ill, but I thought she was home. Her name is Mother Reed. And I know you okay. all are saints of God and y'all got strong prayer. I'm going to ask you all to call her name in prayer with me and while she's in there because I haven't been crying and praying for the last but since about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock and uh, then but now I got to find out where she at because I got to go see her and if it's feasible because I don't know how bad she was talking and she had somebody to call in the Bible study and let us know. That's how I know she's in the hospital. But I had heard she wasn't feeling good, but I thought she was home. So I got to call her tomorrow and find out where she at because that's just, she a soldier in my book. You know, she a soldier. And if you know, I don't know. I just got to go by and see what and if anything I can do for her. Yes, sir. You have her brother there and he's kind of like paralyzed on one side. And I think her daughter is in New Orleans working. I don't know. She probably here now if her mom is in the hospital. Like I said, I got to talk to him and find out more. But her name is Mother Reed. So if y'all can okay. just mention her in y'all prayer line. I would be grateful, and I know y'all are prayer warriors. Y'all can get a prayer through, and uh, like I say, I I done got a few through, and I can recognize and I can identify, and I hope I can get one through where he can put her back on her feet, you know? Okay. So, but like well, I said, man, I, I just I, wanted I to you talk to you guys. Yeah, I want to talk to you guys. Because I can say I ain't talked to y'all since last year sometime, right around after Thanksgiving. But I be I I be in the classes, but like I say, if I don't be jolly on the spot, I go to the YouTube channel and review them. And I like the one you did with the pastors. I like that. That Friday night. Yes, sir. Yeah, I like that. I've been Wait for you guys to come back. What's what's up? Uh, what happened is the reason that they do it is that one time we got into it and one person, they were going back and forth and we weren't dealing with the issues at hand and we were talking about too many issues. And so one of the brothers said it was confusing. So what will have to happen is we have to learn how to deal with is one issue at the time instead yeah, you can't of take the whole you know you can't take the whole bone y'all you know you ain't gonna get nothing done you got to work on one and then but the issues y'all was dealing with that particular night looked like y'all was on the sam card well well on that one we'll you let's you and i talk and see what we can do okay <laughs> we got it <laughs> all right I want to see if Andrina going to say anything. She ain't said much yet. Andrina, you got anything for us too? I, I enjoyed it. It was, um, it, it strengthened me. You know, when you start listening to and you start hearing a duty, there's mm -hmm. a call to duty. There's a, there's a video game that's called Call of Duty. Call of Duty. <laughs> yes, it and, is. You know, but you hear a call of duty and you hear, you know, what has transpired and what we've been given and why we are where we are. And it's an acknowledgement of how we got here. And we have to recognize that. That we shouldn't ignore that. And we shouldn't be think taken for granted that, oh, it's just because of me I got here. No. There was a series of events that took place and you arrived here 
and uh, many of the events were outside of your control. Yes. And yeah. so once we get to see that, to see where we are and how we got here, we can understand how to get out. What we need to do, we need to stop trying to conform, stop trying to, to assimilate into what we, to this culture, because the culture is getting worse and worse. Oh and my it's, God. It's amazing oh. to me. It's amazing to me mm. that you wanted that, that even in the 60s, the 50s, 40s and 50s, that you said that, that assimilating would be a good thing when you understood that the people you were assimilating with or the culture you were assimilating into had beaten your ancestors. It wasn't that far from that time. Rape them. Mm -hmm lynch them that those things were still happening and you say I, oh i want to assimilate and be a part of that how can you be a part of that culture except the way that you're always you've been a part of that culture yes as an, as Ooh. not even a second class citizen you're not even a second class mm -hmm. citizen you are chattel and so to, to say I want to be assimilated and, and that integration is the same thing as assimilated. And to say I want to be integrated with them, but I knew that they had other things in mind when they say they wanted to be integrated. The integration was not so much as I want to, you know, so much as to sit at a counter where you eat, is that the same economic base that you gave the whites, you ought to get the blacks. You gave them things. The first, the first, what they call them, <laughs> the first affirmative action was for white people. And they came <laughs> over here and they got everything. <laughs> and you it's gave them funny. money and you gave them education. You gave them everything they needed. And we're saying, not so much as I need to, you told us, well, you know, you're not really us and, you know, you are different people and, well, you are different cast and, and, and we said, no, we've worked and we built this country. Now, why wouldn't you give us that same opportunity? Why wouldn't you give us what you gave them? Mm -mm. And that is the dilemma. And so when you start seeing that, how bad it was that even what we call Christians, the white Christians that ain't nobody speaking up for us. They ain't standing up and saying, well, yeah, let black people have with no. They ain't doing that. <laughs> they gonna yeah. build that church across the street and, and y'all Negroes can go and have yours across the street. You don't they have to are so anymore. They are so afraid of us now. Yes. And here lately, from a Christian standpoint, from an educated standpoint, from a respectable standpoint, I myself, I used to walk into a room with them and I would not open my mouth like they won't. I was being them. Now I walk into a room and they are all in there and I walk in, I say, good morning, everyone, or good evening, everyone. And I stand and I look to see who's going to respond. Some do, some don't. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very shocking to see the expression on their face to see them look at a black man with intelligence to say, I entered into a room with people in it and I'm going to address them. Yes. And some of them don't know how to respond. You know, they got the, uh, uh, oh, 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 you know, and then mm -hmm. they, well, good evening or good morning. But it, it's, it's like, and, and I'm teaching my grandson, don't become them. No. Don't become them. Be what you are. You are a young black man and you're going to be a young black educated man. Do not fall into the traps because now they have trained our own blacks how to annihilate us. 
Yes. They don't have to do it no more. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I mean, they that's been us. Yes. Doing it to ourselves. Yes, sir. You see? And that's the hurtness part. I'm praying. I'm teaching this young man that speak. Love God and always serve God, but speak the truth. Do not let your service to God make you afraid to speak for what's right. Don't depend on God to fix everything because that's why you here. You his soldiers to fix what need to be fixed here on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You yes. Yes. You have to stand up for what he left the legacy in that Bible for us to do. We was asked a question tonight and uh, is killing no is killing someone that kill somebody murder. I, I immediately say, God say you take a life, you give a life. But that's a, a I say, God say, if you steal two years to come from me, you got to give me four years back. Uh, uh, well, we speaking, uh, let me see how you say that. We speak in justified murder. Is it justified for the system to kill somebody that kills somebody? I say, yeah. God said you spill blood, your blood should be spilled. I'm talking God law. I'm not talking white folk law. Well, uh, we're going to have to get back on this. We're going to have to get back on this. See, y'all, y'all, see, y'all get y'all making people I, disturbed up in that. Camp. Tim, Tim, don't uh, you don't, don't doesn't that sound familiar? We're gonna very, have to table. We're gonna have to table this, and yeah. then you never get back to it. I grew up with that. When you start so talking about, about the table, she, I, no. hey, 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 my pastor, she listen at you, knowing what God require of me. I must speak what God require. Because yes. undoubtedly, he's not going to speak what God requires. He's going to find a way to make it seem like it spiritually is ungodly to even thinking about killing somebody even after they didn't kill somebody. See, but my God, my God, my heavenly Father said, "If you spill my blood, if you spill blood, I take blood." And what he said. And that's what he meant. Amen. But I want to see next Tuesday how he's going to come back with this. And then I'm going to have some scripture wrote down where I can read to him and tell him God said this and God said that. You know? How you might get his communicated. What, what, what judgment is you going to believe? The white man judgment or God judgment? Because the white man's judgment said you can kill black folks all day long. It nothing did. happened to you. It said you know? it. But and if they you did kill it. one white person, then you be executed. And I told him tonight, it's only one law on the books. If you kill a policeman, a firefighter, a ambulance driver, it's automatic death penalty. That's the only one white folks have on the book. And I'm only, I'm more than sure it only applies to blacks. Mm. And I'm willing to bet that you can find, I don't know how, what record I could go into and search to find out have any white person killed a police officer has been executed. Uh, he's still waiting to be tried. I mean, you know, he's still sitting waiting to be executed. I haven't looked it up yet, but I do know one shot Reagan and he lived. Well, he if didn't you had shot him, him. Oh, if I'd have <laughs> shot him, I'd have been dead on the spot. You know? No argument for me. 
That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, but I am so glad that I got Bible knowledge to all, not say all of these points, but when he is scared to bring the truth out to the fold and Deacon Jackson is on point too. He's speaking out like a champ, you know, and, uh, like a champ, <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I really, you know, like, I don't feel, cause see, like me, I don't feel no kind of way because like I said, I was in that congregation for years and I left. I joined church in New Orleans. My membership is in my home church now in New Orleans. That's why I'm always down. So I, uh, I still visit them and I still attend their Bible study till they tell me to quit. And if I keep coming up with these kind of answers, he probably going to say it's only for the members only, but then I'll just back out. <laughs> but that would be very selfish of him, but I would not put it past him. It's like this, um, they had this men thing last Thursday and Friday and uh, said that they had breakfast at the church. And he specifically stated for Holy Fellowship members only. Now, y'all can invite anybody to the services. Everybody can come to the services, but the men of Holy Fellowship is the only ones that can come to the breakfast. I say that's kind of like uh, giving people a slap in the face. They didn't, come, you know, they didn't spend two nights with you and everything, and then when y'all gonna have a men's day breakfast, it's just the men of Holy Fellowship and not all the other churches and things that been there with you for the last couple of nights. I say, I wouldn't have never stayed that. Me, personally. Well, it, you know, and, the Lord, we, we call, I call you tomorrow and let you tell me about it so that Everything that went on there, we want that everybody won't know it because somebody might get angry with you. <laughs> and... <laughs> it's true. Well, hey, I'm only speaking and, the and, truth. And, you, and if you're trying to and do a good work, lying. I don't. If you're trying to do a good work, I don't want you banned. You know, for just you know letting everybody know. But you can tell me because. My thing is, anytime I can help you with a situation, I want to be able to do so, okay? Oh, you doing that, man. You really doing that, man. Like I say, it's, you done really made me a warrior, Christ, you know. I've been a warrior, but I just didn't have the ammunition, you know. And see, when I say, a long time ago, I used to talk, I said, well, I think this, but I couldn't go to Scripture to back me up. But now... I can tell him, well, look, no, the Bible say this, and it's in Second Kings such and such, uh, First Chronicles, this is this, uh, Matthew, this is this. But so, you know, and like I say, Deacon Jackson showed me how to play my radio, my my Bible on my radio. I thank him for that, and I thank you for teaching me the Bible on Saturdays and Tuesdays, and sometimes. Well, you had a Friday. I, I snuck in on you on a Friday, but it was on the YouTube. It was after the service. But uh, like I say, I listen to all your videos. Well, thank you. you. Know and if the Lord's will, I'll send you a link to another two or three hundred. We have an we have another YouTube channel that I don't know if you know about it. You have another one besides the STM chapter? Yes, sir. We have one called Seeking Truth Ministry. I sent it to me because I can say a lot of times, I don't know, sometimes I, I'll be in the white. You know how I have to distinguish, you know, like you got some say three days ago, some say six days ago, some say 10 days ago. Say years That's ago. how I try to stay. That's what I want. That's what I want. Because like I said, some of the other ones, they got like 12 months ago, this month ago. I said, okay. I'll tell you what. He, he I'll, send you, I'll send you something that will show you tw about 20 years ago. That's that's on another thing. That's just audio, not video. <laughs> We've been doing this for about 20 years. That's great. That's great. And you ain't losing okay. faith, you know? 
And, and like I say, like tonight, you know, I think it's Adrian and Gary and me, three people listening to you. But then I go back and I look at it on the YouTube channel. You got 123 views. You see? Yes, sir. So when we sitting here going through this and discussing this, it's people coming behind us, 63 views, 179 views 10 days ago. You know, it's like you told me a long time ago. I got to be careful what I say because other people will be watching this too. You know? Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's good. You know, and I it's thank great, you all and the to be a part. God bless y'all, and y'all have a good night. And yes, uh, like I say, too, I'll be tuning in. Yes, I'll be tuning in instead. Okay. I'll be listening later on that night. Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. love you guys. Y'all take care. We love you too. All right. All right. We love you too. Okay. Andrina. Yes, sir. If you got any you got any last thing you could tell me that I can take with me when I when I shut off. Because I know you got something. I know you're kind. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh my God. <laughs> so I'm telling you, I'm gonna tell you what, what you brought to mind. And when you start saying just preach Jesus, and I thought about is it John 7 and 7? When he told his brother, the world can't hate mm. you. It can't. But it hates me. He said, the world hates me because I testify that the deeds that are done in are evil. And this is our position. This is where we stand. This is where we fall. We have to testify that the deeds that are done in this world are evil. We have to. And no, yeah. no one is exempt. No one is exempt. And remember, he said this to his brother. He said this to his brother, his blood brother. Now we need to understand that he did come in flesh and blood and he did look like somebody. He had DNA like we have. Yes. So when you start saying that he didn't look like, well, he was white. Well, we didn't, well, we know he could have been white. Well, we just won't say he's black. You already know what he is. <laughs> you already know what he is and you already know that he came in the flesh and he looked like us well if he if they if they read and if they read do you, do you know any other race that had hair like lamb hair like not wolf. that I know of uh -uh. skin like polished brass uh -uh. Oh, you done went too far now you know so, uh, uh, and I don't even look, like that. hide in Egypt, you know, because most so hide in Africa. <laughs> that's it. Most other races have springy straight hair. The mm -hmm. Africans, we are the only ones have lamb wool hair, kinky hair. So my savior was a black man. Yes, and anybody who says anything different. They're denying they can that he came in the They can play. paint all the pictures they want, but see, the Bible said he had hair of lamb, skin of polished brass. Okay? Now you show me another nationality of people that have hair of a lamb and skin like polished brass, and I'll shut up. And I ain't, I'm, I'm not talking... I know, and I ain't saying he American black because we were brought here. I, and I ain't saying, you know, I'm saying he's an African black. Where the, the African nation was the setup of the kingdom of God. And I'll leave it there. And y'all white folks try to take credit for everything, but you can't take that. And you can try to erase it out the Bible, but it's too late. Too many of us done read it already. True. Oh my God. It's the truth. It's the truth. And I love it. I love it. I love it to know that I am a heritage. I know that I am a king. I'm from a king. 
my heritage is the kingdom and the foundation of the world, you know, and if I believe I could go back and search the, gene the genealogy of my roots, who know, I might be a long lost descendant of a great king, a great, I am a great king. I ain't a descendant. All my descendants going to be descendants of a great king because I'm trying to, I am a great king. He said that you would be a kingdom of priests. That's it. And, mm -hmm. and if we don't embrace that, and when I mean embrace, I mean engage, engage him all the time. And when they tell you, oh, preach Jesus, I want to go and see what he said. That drives me to want to know what he said about himself, about the world, about his disciples, about the, the Gentile nations. I want to know what he said about that. And I've been taught that it wasn't before or after the cross. And if it was before the cross, it don't matter. That's the We've truth. We've been taught to think in that way. We've been taught no. to love John 7 and 7 when he said the world can't hate you. But I That's testify fine. of it. That's why it hates me. And he's saying that it's go the world go, don't, don't be fretting because the world hates you. It hated me first. He said that's our heritage, that the world should hate us. Because we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different. Yeah. You know, and they're not going to like us because we are different. You know, it's not so different it's... like them. Because if we out there like them, they're going to get along with us. Because they even get along with the Caucasian brothers, the Caucasian brothers, when they get to drinking and smoking and dancing and partying and hey hi and all that good stuff. You know, they all be one good big club until they go their separate ways. And then they'll start talking about, man, them niggas was something else. Boy, them white boys was crazy, you know? But now, the Christian family, you know, and like I said, and I tell everybody, we, the black people, we was God's chosen people. We was God's chosen people. And the only thing that I can't get them to understand and I try to, do you think any other race of people could have overcome what we overcome in this country and overcome what our black ancestors are going through in Africa now, if we wasn't God chosen people? And some will say, if you God chosen people, why y'all going through so much? Because greed, turmoil, and Satan can persuade the yeah. shiny stuff, the shiny this, the shiny that. That's how we get here. The, the shiny beads and murals and whiskey sold off whole tribes of us. Yes. So, but I... Sometime I be listening to that pastor when he's going down through that, and I like, man. I used to, when when they first show show roots, I was a youngster then, and man, I wanted to go out and kill every white person I see. Hey, hey, <laughs> Elder Lane, you want? Hey, that's I mean, but that's true. I know so. you felt it, but. Somebody Don't might still think you feel it. He didn't do it, though. That was way back when he didn't do it. <laughs> hey, I'm a shoo shoo right now, brother. I see it when they first brought roofs out. And you know how many symptoms ago that was. But like I say, man, it, it you know, uh, spiritual growth, I have to love them because God created them just like He created me. Mm. But just like He said to you all. <laughs> the Israelites, he, uh, we are his chosen people, and we have to be a, a walking example of him amongst all mankind. We have to show the world that we can live in peace and harmony, and they do everything they can to not let that be. 
That's just like Iran, Iraq, and all those Egyptian company countries. If it, they ever come to world peace, and these countries lay down the guns and the wars and live in peace, my Savior will return. So uh, I'm going to say good night to y'all because I got to go to work in the morning. It's yes, almost sir. midnight. I love y'all. And uh, we can pick this up another time. Pastor Tim, I will holler at you sometime. All uh, right. But lately, I've been like, man, trying to do, trying to do, trying to do. That's and okay. We love you, me. Elder. We love oh, you. I love y'all, man. Yeah. I, I swear. Hey, good night, Elder mm -hmm. Lane. We appreciate you. Okay. Love you guys. Take care. All right. Good night. Good night, you too. Good night, Uncle Gary. Now y'all can, can talk sweet nothings or sweet something. Uh, thank you, because it's like my why my words got to be a nothing. You know, Timothy, you still a forte. Just don't forget it. Yes, sir. All right, love y'all. Love you too, Gary. All right, good night. Good night, Gary. Andrina, finish, finish telling me what you had to say before we before we shut down Precious Love. I wanted to hear it. I was I was just talking, thinking about John seven and seven, and, mm -hmm. and when they say preach Jesus or preach like Jesus, and and I, I want to keep saying that because that means something. Mm -hmm. And that if he said the world will hate you. He said, it's going to hate you, but it, you know it hated me first. Mm -hmm. Why did it hate me first? Because I testified that the deeds that are done in it are evil. And if we, as people of the Most High, are not testifying about the world being evil, and, it, and we're not talking about church evil. We talking about church evil. We talking about religious evil. We talking about um political evil we talk about medical evil we're talking about every evil that is done under the sun yes and that's our position our position is that our kingdom is is not this kingdom that is ruling that our our messiah has gone to receive a kingdom and what are we saying to him there were some people that said one time we're not gonna have that man to rule over us. That's he what, left and that's how we at. a kingdom. Yes. And he left a duty to be done. And some citizens said, mm, not doing that. We're not having him to rule over us. So when you tell me that his words don't matter. Yes. You tell me his words don't matter. You say, was that before or after the cross? You don't care about it after the cross either. Stop lying. Because I, when I, I go into the book I of Revelation, that comment. Because when I go into the book of Revelation, you still don't want that either. He said, I know your works, your works, your works, your works. Yes. Repent, repent, repent. And who is he talking to? He's not talking to the Gentile nations. He's talking to the church. Yes. And this is the evil that we face. It is evil. It's orchestrated evil. It's the evil that is mentioned in, uh, it's, I want to say it's Isaiah 10, that you, mm -hmm. you, woe to you who decree unrighteous decrees. You make up stuff. And you write grievous things. You prescribe things. Oh, that word is heavy, prescribe. Yes. And you turn aside the needy from judgment. People who need to have judgment. Yes. And this is what, when you talk to a person who can't cause himself a, a, a person of the cloth or a clergy or whatever they call themselves a pastor a bishop and you say hey 
we need to get some judgment going here. No, we're not doing that. The needy don't mean, oh, I'm just begging you and I'm pleading you. I'm just in need. I'm like that woman that say, judge, please hear me. That's it. That I like that. I'm glad you brought that to my, as they say, my memory. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I'm just, I just need a dollar from you. I need judgment from you. Righteous judgment. And I got to keep pleading with you. This judging, he don't care. He don't fear God or man. You don't fear God or man either for you to say what you say. Now, now that is sense. it. He had enough sense to say this because you keep pleading. I'll do something. And this has been our record of, of saying, hey, you can't keep doing this. It's not that we're not living and we're not existing and we're not thriving and like we don't have families and we don't have jobs and we don't have houses. We don't have cars. That's not it. We don't have justice. Thank you. And you're going to kind of mix it up like they crying because they ain't got, they waiting for us to get them some money so they can, nigga, we ain't waiting on that. And I mean that in the sense we got some sambos that'll be jockeying. for white folks and telling us well we don't need money well reparations is not money well you know well we don't need no we need justice and how do you think they felt in egypt how long had they been there some people say how many years 400 some oh, people say 215 204 from 215 years to 400 years they had been in egypt this is i mean just how scholars see it and god said 400 so i you know because some of those some of those some of those years that he had in the equal to 430 all of them might not have had to be all of our years of oppression under pharaoh and but you talk about 200 that, but, years yes even if i just reduce it down to just 215 years if i reduce it down to that those people still felt they had an obligation yep and they paid now, it too boy and they paid it boy. They paid it. But lest you wait until that be done in you, you already witnessing your sons and daughters dying of what you call an opioid crisis. How much more do you need? Because he's got more. How much more are your brothers and sisters are suffering in, 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 in Europe? And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it real quickly, I'm going to pass by it, but in Germany, they say some of the people who got got that that um, medical procedure, mm -hmm. they're developing AIDS. What? Yes. They're telling it. They, they, it's, we're suffering. What are you going to do about it? But your it, sins will find you out. They will surely find you out. And the Lord is, and the Lord is so beautiful. And he's so faithful. But we that, that, that used to be your saying. So you ain't faithful. said that like that in a so long faithful. time. I'm glad to hear it again because oh, oh. that, that's the banner right there. He's so faithful, but we have to be faithful and we have to continually cry out. And 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 don't and we not we and spare. Spare not. Spare not for they cry. Oh, I don't want to feel guilty. Oh, I don't want to talk about that. Oh, that was in the, spare not. Cry out and spare not. Amen. Because if we don't be faithful, then why would they? 
Gosh, get our minds right. Well, thank you for thank you for your comments. And I, I do can wanna, talk I do to you. Say I one can last talk thing. to you more myself, huh? I do want to say one last thing. Okay, go ahead, precious love. Any, anyone that will listen to this that understands what oppression really is mm-hmm. and understands the enemy in the way that they should. I mm-hmm. want you to turn to Psalm 140 and I want you to say it and I want you to recite it and I want you to pray it. To understand that we're we're not supposed to be here. It's time. It's always time for deliverance. It's always time for the truth. It's always time to cry out. Psalm 140. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Deliver me, O Yah, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagines mischiefs in their heart continually, or they gather together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips, Selah. Keep me, O Yahweh, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who have purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set their grins for me, Selah. I said unto Yahweh, thou art my God. Hear thou the voice of my supplications, O Yahweh, O Elohim, Yahweh, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered my head as in the day of battle. Grant not, O Yah, the desires of the wicked, further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves, Selah. As for about the head of those that compass me about, let mischief of their own lips cover them. Let the burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast in the fire to the deep pits that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall haunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that Yahweh will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely, The righteous shall give thanks unto thy name, and the upright shall dwell in thy presence. Amen. Amen. Even so, amen. Hallelujah. Let's let let that psalm take us home. Good night, everybody. Let's read that psalm once a day, at least for a week. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to play it too and listen to it.